Let's take a look at a simple authentication program. That's the first one right here. So I'm going to write a, a simple authentication program, and what I'm going to use in this is a nested if statement. So in this particular program, I'm going to grab my scanner, which is going to allow me to bring input from the user panel and or the console. And so I'm actually going to do scanner twice because I'm going to bring in two pieces of information. Okay. So here's the first information: is I'm going to bring in the username. All right. And then if the username is equal to Mr. Mike, all right, then I'm going to uh, go to the next one, and I'm going to use my nested if statement. So you have an if statement below that. So I've nested an if statement inside of an if statement, and it's going to ask me if my password equals Y32, Y342, no, then, hey, I'm going to be logged in. So you've seen, we've done this authentication stuff before, and now we're just doing it in Java. And if it doesn't work, I get an incorrect password. And if it doesn't work, I get what? An unknown user. So the way this nested loop is working is if this is true, then it's going to run the nest next one. But if it's not true, this is going to take me immediately to unknown user because you need to, we don't need to run the next one. You didn't get the right username. Forget it. Okay? You need to get that right first. And if you get that right first, then it's going to test and see what? If you got the right password. Let's go ahead and run this program. And I've got to remember what my password was. Y342 no. So let's go ahead and run this first. So what's my username? Well, if I put the wrong username in there, it'll go, "Hey, user unknown." So it skips me out of the uh, if statement. I don't run the next. I don't run the nested if. So let's run that again. So if I do put in Mr. Mike there, and it's got a, it's case sensitive. Are you still there? Uh, and I put Mike in there. Run that. Hey, it takes me to the next one. Let's put a password in there. If I get the wrong password, it says, "Hey, incorrect password." So let's run it again. So it pushes me out of that nest. So let's see if I can get it right here. Mr. Mike. Y342. Okay. Hey, I logged in. There you go. So that's an example of a nested uh, password system. I might not use it like this, but it's a good example of if statements and authentication as far as using nested loops. All right, here's something fun for you, a little guessing game. We're going to do some guessing here. This came from uh, Java for Dummies, and so I threw it in there for you. And you can see immediately what this guy is going to do is use the system out uh, uh, class, so he can just keep from typing one uh, statement, system statement. He's going to bring in a scanner. He's actually going to bring in a random number generator. Okay. And so what we're going to do here is, in this particular program, we've got the scanner going, and you're going to guess a number. So you type a number 1 through 10 in there. And then what you're going to so it says enter a number one through ten. And what we're going to do then is the scanner is going to grab the number that you type in there, and it's also going to generate a random number. And so it's going to compare your input number to that random number. And if you get that, you get hey you win. And if you don't get it because you're using your if else statement, you get you lose. All right. Now if you wanted to make this game run like maybe ten times or twenty times, you'd use a, a, a looping statement in here. Or, or a while if, or something to loop you back to the beginning to, do, to run it again. Or you could put a button on the screen like you mentioned and just run the method inside there over and over again until you got tired. So let's go ahead and run this program and see if we can win. Hey, enter a number between 1 and 10. Let's hit 3. And I lost. And so please play this game at your leisure. We could be doing this all day long. <laughs> I actually, the first time I ran this, I got it right. I was so happy, and I never, I haven't gotten it since. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you may be work after this. You may be writing programs for Las Vegas. Who knows? Hey, hey. So anyway, do you understand the program? And you've come a long way. I mean, to come up to that and just say, hey, I, that makes sense to me. We're good. Okay. Now here's the one that you've been waiting for. I think we've gone through all the programs except for one, and that is the uh, program on. Um, uh, basically a constructor function. So if you go to uh, uh, back to the notes um, and I made sure we got this uh, Bucky has a video on constructors so you want to watch that video and I think this is your question right or one of your questions. Okay so we can come back and look at that in a moment. So let's do the constructor method. So I use this all the time in other coding constructor methods. And basically what a constructor method does, it runs uh, when you run the program. Or when you instantiate an object, the constructor method runs first. Okay? So I'm putting a method inside of a method. Now one thing I want to say here is I have two programs here. One is called main method. And one is called who is who. Okay? 
So the main method is going to use the who is who method. All right, this is a very important point here. If this who is who method was in a different folder structure, then I would need to import it. But since it's in the same folder structure as the main method, I don't have to call the import statement. It automatically looks for it in its own folder structure. And if it's not there, then you need the import statement to bring it in. OK? All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at main method. OK, let me just, you almost got it. It's just opposite. If main method makes a reference to who is who, and they're, and they're in the same folder structure at the same level, then you don't need to use the import statement. If they're not at the same level, then you need an import statement to, to, to bring one into the other. And a lot of people miss that at the beginning when they start programming. They, they'll create one method and they'll put another one in the folder. So, hey, why isn't it calling it? And the other one is, why do I need the import statement to bring it in? Because it's in the same, same place as the other one is. Yeah, and if you've had some painful instances, you, you, you'll never forget it. So I'm going to cre create a little method here. It's very simple. I'm just going to use my uh, create a class. So I, I call it main method, and here's my ending curly bracket. And then is, in that class, I'm going to use my main string. So whatever in that main string is going to run first, right? And now what I'm going to do is something called instantiation. I'm going to go, I'm going to declare kind of strict typing from a class. So I've created this class who is who. I'm going to instantiate a, a, a variable, my who is, from my class. A who, that's kind of deep stuff, right? And so P, MIT doesn't even begin to handle this yet, all right? But what I'm doing is I'm instantiating the class, which means I'm going to be able to use all the code in this class as if it's running on this variable. All right. So I have methods inside of who is who. I have a who is who, a method, and it's going to, I'm going to stick Steve in there. And a who is who constructor, I'm going to stick Doug in there. And the methods within those who is who is going to run, and that method is called saying. So before we move on, let's go ahead and just take a look at who is who and explain how to create a constructor method. Real quick here. Oh, good. I mean, this, this is great stuff, and this is powerful stuff, because now you're starting to get the ideas of inheritance, the ideas of polymorphism, the ideas of classes, and how, how you can actually work with different classes. I mean, this is all extremely powerful stuff. The first thing you need to know about this class, which I called who is who, that was my name, I decided to call who is who, and uh, here's my closing bracket, is that there's no main statement in there. You see a main statement in there? No. So not every class has to have a main statement. But it does have a constructor method. The important thing about a constructor method, and it has no return type. Look at that. You don't see a void. You don't see a, see a string. You don't see a double. There's no return type because it knows just to run that. So whenever this object is instantiated, kind of like the main, the first thing that's going to run is the constructor method. Real important, the constructor method must have the same name as the class name. See how the class name is who is who? The constructor method is also who is who. So this constructor method right here is going to actually receive as a string name. So if I go back to my main uh, program, I'm declaring a variable called my who is, instantiating it as the who is who class, and I'm sticking in a name called Steve or Doug. I've instantiated two different objects, my who is one and my who is two, or my who is and my who is two. Those are totally different. It's a to totally different instantiation of the same class. And this is what's so powerful about classes and objects in Java, is that even though that comes from the same class, they don't know each other exist. I mean, they are instantiated under totally different names, and so they react totally differently. Okay? So that means I don't have to write that over and over and over again. I could hard code all of this in the same program. In each case, I'd have to run, write code for this method, and then I'd have to, excuse me, I'd have to write code for this variable, and then I'd have to write code for this variable. But by using this whole object-oriented bit, I've got it in an object called who is who Java down here. I just have to basically instantiate it each time I need it, so I don't have to rewrite that code over and over again. Now, I know that's, that's actually the heart of object-oriented programming, and it might be kind of tough to get it, but let's just follow the program, okay? Uh, you have a trick here in Eclipse. You can hold down your control key, roll over, uh, uh, over uh, something, and it highlights. If you click on that, it takes you to where that method is. If I click on that, it takes me back to who is who. Look at that. So now let's just follow the who is who program. In the who is who program, I have a instantiation of a name. So it brings a name in, and it sticks it into a variable called my name is. My name is a what? Well, if I come up to the top of who is who, my name is a string. You see that? So it just takes whatever comes in and sticks it into the string my name is. 
So that point right there, I'm cr I'm going to hug up on my get name return. Remember we talked about return? Notice that I am actually got a return type str type here. It's not void, it's string. So when I run that, it's going to return a string. So what it's going to do, ta-da, we're almost there, is I have one more method called saying just below that. And what it's going to do, it's going to take, uh, it's going to print to the screen, who is, who, <laughs> who is, who is, get name. Now what does that do? It prints this out to the screen, runs the get name method, grabs the get name, which is a name that I put in my constructor. So if I put Mike or Doug in there, it's going to print out the screen, who is who, Mike, or who is who, Doug. Isn't that complicated enough? Boy, welcome to object-oriented programming. But once you get it, you're going to love it. So let's go back to the beginning. Let's trace the whole program one more time and then run it, okay?